And yeah, so I have the gliding part. And two clean notes that it sounds like in the song. Make different tracks. Uh, just because you have one software instrument that's supposed to sound this way, but you know you can't get it to sound that way the exact same way every single time, make another track with the exact same instrument and just change a few of the settings and it'll sound like it's all one instrument. Uh, cool thing about gliding, if you notice they have that little, uh, sounds like a, a DJ spinning out the tables really fast. Uh, it's just, what I did is I just put in a really high glide. So down here in my piano roll, I have a low note and it's gliding to this super high note that I decided was going to be a super high D from a low C. It's gliding from here all the way up to here, and you can hear it if I click on it. That's my glide. That's all I did. Um, I faked it out. I faked the computer out. I mean, I'm pretty sure they had a sample of a real uh, table turn or whatever the heck they were doing. They probably had a DJ messing around with the sample loops that they were playing on some uh, digital tables or uh, CDJs or whatever. Um, all I did was I faked it out with a glide. So if you can hear those, uh, there's just a few glides in there, and it's just a simple trick that you can have. And then I layered some uh, some other sounds in there. Various, oh, wow, I'm running out of battery power. i going to move real quick. Uh, I layered in some different drum tracks. Uh, they have this, um, what is it? A tambourine, I guess, is what they're called. Um, in order to put that in the background, I just went through the different drum sounds and found the one that I wanted and layered those in. And they also have this uh, another retro sound. Listen to this uh, piano loop that I heard. It's really, really, really faint in the background, but I, I'm pretty sure this is exactly what it is. I, I'm listen to the song. If you don't believe me, like put on some really, really good headphones and just close your eyes and listen to the song. And I'm pretty sure this is there, cause uh, I don't know. Maybe the timing's off, but it, it was weird. It tripped me out, cause I didn't really think that they made sounds like that anymore. But it's pretty funny, and you'd miss it if it wasn't there, because when it's all playing together, it sounds new, fresh, awesome, good sound, um, whatever. It sounds like this. Because when you're listening to the song, the first thing you hear is this gliding thing up here, and you're not really listening to all the layers that are there, especially with compressed MP3s, which just throw out data all over the place. Um, you know, other sort of compression that doesn't do, do justice to the song. Um, headphones that uh, don't bring through all the highs and lows of the song that the producer took hours and hours and hours, days on end, maybe even months, to put together the exact sound that they wanted. Get some good headphones. Um, don't use MP3 if you don't have to. Um, if you really want to hear the full range of the dynamic sound that they put into there, unless it's highly compressed, which uh, this is music theory, by the way. Um, you don't have to pay attention to this portion of the tutorial. Um, but yeah, this tutorial is running kind of long. I didn't really think I had this much to talk about. Um, I thought this was going to be a quick, like, five-minute tutorial. Like, this is how to use GarageBand. This is how to click. This is where everything is. And go do your own thing. But there was more that to talk about than I really thought. Um, I think I covered everything in this song. Uh, got your piano roll, the track info, details software instruments, custom software instruments, layering your sound. Um, don't use MP3 when you share, uh, export your song using um, ACC or just don't compress it to do full quality. 
Another thing to make sure you don't do, I think it might be in preferences. Uh, there's an export setting that says compress or limit. I, th I think it's limiting whenever you, uh, here we go, auto normalize. Export projects at full loudness. When you export a project, auto normalize, increase the loudness if needed. The project is not too quiet. This is good if your projects are too quiet, but it's bad if all of your instruments are peaking because the problem that you're going to run into is that it's going to auto normalize it and it's going to cut down on your sound. It's going to limit one of these tracks until everything only hits the red once. It's not like staying in the red area. Um, just a word of advice, try to stay out of the red area, but uh, like these little red things are telling me that I peaked at some point in the song. But one thing that I realized is when you export from GarageBand and you try and stay below this, the levels are completely different. It doesn't sound the same on your MP3 player or your uh, iPhone or iPod or whatever the heck you're listening to or using to listen to this. It's not the same loudness as all the other songs, and you're going to have a really loud song and a really quiet song, which is going to be yours. And it's embarrassing when people are listening to it. And you're like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I'm embarrassed. Um, so I really don't mind when it peaks in here. I mind if it peaks if I'm like editing a movie that I'm making. Uh, or if I'm working in Soundtrack Pro trying to work on fully techniques or whatever I'm doing for my movies, um, I worry about that. But in GarageBand, I haven't really run into a problem where it starts to distort outside of the program. I mean, listen to it. Make sure that you know, you're know you not running over your own sound because you can hear the differences. Play with the volume so that you understand what's the difference between if I put it at 12 plus decibels or, or 6, it only goes up to 6 plus. Or if I set it at 0, or if I'm setting it really quiet, what's the differences that are going to happen there when I'm layering all these plus 6 decibel sounds? Uh, for me, it came out fine, because most of the plus 6s are all in the drum tracks, which I don't really mind if they distort, because they're distorted in the samples anyway. So it just added a cool layer of sound to what I was doing. Um, but yeah, those are all the tips that I have for today. If I didn't... Um, if I didn't cover something that you want to learn, uh, put it down in the comments section. I don't mind making tutorials. I've never really made one before. This is my first one, and I'm pretty sure this is a long freaking tutorial. I'm scared to look at the, uh, the time when I'm done here. I sure hope it will upload to YouTube. Um, but yeah, let me know if this was helpful. Uh, if not, I will stop making them. But if they were, then I will continue. Just let me know in the comments section. Uh, yeah, you guys go out there, make some songs. Surprise me. Send them to me. I'd love to hear what you guys are making from my tutorials. Make me feel great, like I actually helped and did something for society. Uh, thank you, and uh, go make some songs.